to this, I suggest we uh, now actually kick off our uh, conference with a general presentation, a key question we thought, why uh, is, uh, does this progress project exist? It's a way uh, to in a way, get back into the, uh, the, the, the question and to, to review why uh, we wanted to create this new software layer, what are the aims, what are the services that the program technology will be providing, and who uh, best or better than Alexey Tamas to explain all this, a member of the board of directors and a co-inventor of the fragrance technology with Amory Cambert, who is also here. So, Alexey, over to you. Good evening, and thank you again for coming. So, indeed, I will try to answer this question. So, thank you, Alexey, and thank you, Stefan, for this uh, introduction. So, why uh, does this fragrance uh, project exist? So, who better than you to answer this uh, question? If I want to put this back into perspective, you will know that OP3FT, um, uh, among its uh, work and missions, uh, is uh, aims to promote the fragrance technology. and. Uh, when we, uh, during uh, certain events, uh, we meet people from the internet ecosystem, we are asked this question, why? Why uh, did you develop this um, ambitious uh, project of a new internet layer? Uh, well, in fact, software layer. So since we started OP3FT, we have developed a vision of this um, project, of its ambitions, but it's true. Uh, to this day, this um, vision had never been written black on white, nor had it been uh, clearly communicated upon. Uh, I think Alexis, uh, uh, maybe I will uh, say what you wanted to say. You have decided to set up a website dedicated to this uh, question and to the programs project, and we will talk about this uh, later on, but if you don't mind, I would like to ask you a few questions. About the Fragrance uh, project, its ambitions, and this vision that we uh, describe and will describe on the website. So, Alexey, you were present at the first uh, FTC number one in May, where you presented the Fragrance technology and sites. So, so now you will be looking at things from a higher distance. Uh, you will be stepping back in a way uh, and getting back to the uh, inception of the Fragrance project which started way back in 1999 at a time when the OP3FT did not even exist. And before you start, would you remember those days in uh, 1999 and what, um, with Amory Gaber, uh, decided you to uh, establish this uh, project, to launch this project? Well, true, uh, jean getting back um, a few years, uh, we we have met quite a few people by, uh, in developing this project, and people ask us, why do you have to do something so complicated and ambitious? You must have such a motivation to do so and keep uh, uh, doing it and do th doing things at this level. Introducing a new software layer on the internet is something that has not been done for the last 25 years. So what is your um, basic motivation? So. When we answer this question, it's true with Amohi when we started the project, and some people here will witness to this, um, in, as they were in the team at the beginning, we had already been aware of a number of limitations uh, to the uh, uh, technologies, in, in particular in terms of um, contents publishing on the web. So we thought we needed to address this. And when we look back, well, before getting back 15 years back, we must say that much has been done in the meantime. I'll tell you more about it later on. To show you the major milestones uh, on our way uh, up to now. So, 15 years ago, when we started, we had this vision, and this vision 
has remained the same. The, it was the notion that with the internet, there had been a miraculous promise that everybody on the earth could be able to publish contents easily and rapidly, and this uh, so that all the cybernauts could be um, uh, addressed uh, wherever they are. And, and, and it was uh, great. Everybody w was uh, building up their websites at the time, and, and uh, it was like pervasive going through everywhere. And little by little, the web went through a number of uh, uh, disputes between the industrials and standards. Uh, uh, and uh, things became more complicated. And in the 19, at the end of the 1990s, it was difficult to have websites that would be compatible with two browsers on a PC, even on a PC. And we thought, how come it's so complicated to publish content? So I see this page that uh, is uh, uh, available on the uh, URL project. Uh, dot dot org, um, which is uh, both in French and English. Um, so this uh, amazing promise where you could publish contents uh, disappeared as uh, time passed. And uh, at the end of the day, it is uh, now a very critical uh, situation because with the uh, advent of mobile phones, cell phones, it's even worse than before. So that content publishers, and there are millions of them, are really uh, struggling with this situation to be able to reach all the cybernauts. We, not everybody has become aware of this. Uh, I mean, the public at large, most people believe that uh, they can use uh, sites or mobile apps uh, provided by major players, and they don't quite realize that. Little by little, the medium size or small size, uh, small sites tend to um, be less accessible than before due to the migration of uh, cybernauts on towards a mobile system. So we wanted to restore this capacity to rapidly and easily publish contents without having to uh, to uh, get a headache uh, with the technicalities of all this. It may seem a bit uh, strange. Uh, I'm an engineer by um, background, and uh, Amohi uh, was not uh, either. And we try to remain simple in our approach. Um, so, of course, it took 15 years because uh, this willingness to make it simple and to hide the uh, technology means that we had to add extra work and extra hours. And this is what uh, got the project off the ground, uh, this uh, willingness to have a system uh, where things could be published easily on the Internet so that uh, the publishers could have uh, the pleasure and not only the constraints of publishing. So in this um, adventure, what would you say when you, you say you're, it's 1999 and your ambition to uh, introduce a new software layer on the internet? So basically, why didn't you take part in the discussion about the simplicity of the web by working with uh, the uh, existing bodies like W3C at the time to uh, make sure that the web uh, would not get bogged down in technical matters and considerations and problems that have now become a concern for most um, content publishers that is they need to uh, be in command of an increasing number of words and uh, techniques, uh, technical aspects. So the web, that's the question where people say it works well. I mean, uh, but when you put the same people in, in front of the possibility of publishing, they realize that they spent quite a lot of time uh, trying to publish. So the question asked was whether we could have any influence on the web. And we thought it was not possible, not quite, because the web, uh, throughout history, there has been no coordination of uh, such um, innovations. You know that uh, initially it was developed at the, um, uh, in Geneva by Mr. Tim Berners-Lee, uh, an engineer, an English uh, engineer. And uh, uh, along this um, line, when it started uh, uh, becoming popular, the CERN uh, made, uh, made it uh, granted it to the public domain. So it was in 74, I think. And anybody could use the web, including people who were making browsers, including people who wanted to uh, potentially evolve the standards so that at the end of the day, the coordination 
happened accidentally with the creation of a um, consortium uh, around the creators of the, the web, uh, the W3C, which gathered a number of academics and, and, and researchers. And this ecosystem that developed around the web was not quite coordinated, and therefore there was a battle of browsers and standards with language evolutions that were not uh, particularly coordinated. Therefore, what happened is that the publishers ended up um, uh, bogged down in all these uh, disputes trying to uh, overcome these difficulties. So when we started, that was the picture. We uh, could see that uh, a number of my major players, such as Netscape, Microsoft, were trying to evolve the sound. So at our level, we had no way to uh, influence anything. And besides, I'd say that the second way to answer this question is uh, within the bylaws of uh, OP3FT. In the preamble, we uh, stated that from a technical point of view, the web and its uh, DNA didn't have things that we thought were key in our project. That is the possibility of so that the rendering of the, the sites, uh, the programs, uh, sites, uh, the, the, the rendering should be uh, homogeneous from one device to another. The web had not planned everything, including the presence of a very small screen. So, and also the, the security aspects had not been um, raised and, and, and addressed at the beginning. And so uh, the, right from the start, something was not uh, done in terms of security. And this, I think, we talked about at the last conference. So we didn't say that we would um, review, re-engineer the web. Nobody is able to do so. We thought it would better to start something else from scratch. Uh, yeah, based around principles also, uh, starting something based around a number of principles. You mentioned that security was not top of the agenda when the web was uh, developed because it was among researchers who wanted to exchange and uh, uh, research uh, documents so no problems of leaks or security. Uh, the screens at the time were not an issue because uh, it was all the same type of uh, screens at the time, computer screens, and with um, the revolutions of the smartphones, uh, uh, for has had to address a uh, new situation. And some will say e today that it's quite easy to publish a website on several terminals in spite of uh, what you are saying and the difficulties that you are depicting. So what is uh, the difference between publishing a frozen site and deciding, say, to publish a website and having it cascaded all, all over the various uh, platforms or terms? So the major difference in the Frogan's project is to say that the publisher should have only to develop its contents once and for all. And with a well-developed technology, this uh, content should be rolled out across all the um, terminals without any adaptation needed. It's true that um, t today this promise, and this is the promise of the fragrance technology, will become true. Will Because we, uh, OP3FT, will uh, take uh, responsibility for developing the software tools to guarantee this function. Now, on the web, what is actually happening? You know that there's a wide range of terminals, of screens, of browsers, uh, web browsers, uh, on the various types of um, terminals with different types of rendering uh, um, engines and with all different um, characteristics. So a publisher with either um, start of working hard to have one version of his website for every type of terminal. And then he will be uh, very sad because there's always a new terminal coming out. Or they will use some frameworks that is um, superficial, superficial layers, uh, software layers to um, uh, address the matter. But well, the problem is if you do so, your contents will tend to be um, very much leveled out. They cannot uh, be distinguished clearly from the others. And this is, uh, that is considered, but at the end of the day, there's no real p possibility to uh, differentiate yourself when you have good ideas. The last thing I would add to this is that you could look at it from a different angle. Uh, people say that uh, pu content publishers are not very happy. Right, but there's um, uh, someone who is important in this system is the cybernaut. 
and, and this is a major event which we have witnessed for, uh, for the websites and the internet is that the end users tend from the um, usage with mobile terminals, they tend to cease to go on websites and uh, directly use um, mobile apps uh, on their terminal, easier to use, convenient, which do not require a browsing with the two fingers, clicking on the button that turns up being the wrong button, most of the time ending up on the site that has not been adapted for their terminal and uh, being quite uh, frustrated with the experience. Um, I met a user um, uh, recently and he, he, he said, Every time he had to click uh, on the icon on his browser, on his mobile, uh, he was uh, fearful that it would be long and uh, not uh, particularly fruitful, so he always feared. And so now if you, you see that uh, cybernauts to spend most of the time on the application, they're not on the website. So this is a real problem for content publishers. We know that even if they adapt their sites, they are faced with people who are frustrated and will not go to these sites except if they really need some critical piece of information that they are ready to spend some time and even waste some time uh, for, for it. Now, why uh, don't all um, content publishers uh, go for um, mobile apps? Well, it could have been a, a temptation a few years back, but people have understood in the meantime that cybernauts will not be installing um, hundreds of apps on their on their phones uh, when they want to go for a content, maybe uh, 20, 30, and then they, they st stick with these most of the time. Um, so uh, internet users are not always in a position to access, uh, access an, an, an application. First of all, you, you need to, to be uh, able to have uh, um, access to broadband and free of charge, and it's not always the case. And also, the publishers to make the applications, they would spend they would spend a lot of money because they would need to have one application, for one type of terminal, another one for the other types of terminals. Every time it means additional development costs and also maintenance costs. Also, we don't live in the same world now. Uh, an application is software developments. Science is about contents and putting them online on a server that can be updated anytime. So it's a different dimension, a different approach. And to conclude, I would say that the people, the content publishers that can afford to have applications uh, developed and, and uh, disseminate them uh, are most of the time the big uh, names. So what I'm saying here is that to make it clear, the fragrance technology was not invented uh, with the aim of uh, serving the, the big uh, major publishers. It was right from the start aimed at the small and medium-sized publishers to have a very convenient and safe um, system that they could rely on over time. Uh, well, thank you. Um, what this means to me, in a way, is that the Frogrens uh, project started in a startup uh, where all uh, this vision that you have just um, described was already existing. Then in 2012 is uh, OP3FT. So why, at, one, at this point, uh, did the Frogrens technology come from the private domain to uh, big, to, to be um, hosted in the uh, Fondation Endowment uh, Fund that was uh, very precisely described by Julie Laurent at the first conference. And if you were not there, you can um, get back to this video on the internet uh, about the Fondation Endowment Fund. So why placing the technology in this endowment fund rather than leaving it in this private, uh, privately owned company? Well, when we created this project at the time, uh, we had this idea of having a standard for the frozen technology and to disseminate them uh, at, as a, with the language uh, of this technology and the, the browser, which is a frozen player, which will be used by the uh, internet users, and it was supposed to be on a free of charge basis and a perpetual basis also. And in our f first specifications, we wrote that the user's license were on uh, an open-ended um, 
basis, and then the internet uh, changed, and the players that started between 99 and 2009, we realized that the major players uh, were very voracious, that they were buying companies. Sometimes they would close down the company when they didn't want it to keep uh, going, and uh, and there's, there's a big um, search engine that keeps uh, uh, shutting down projects because they're no longer in line with it. its uh, strategy. Sometimes you also see uh, companies buying other companies to uh, be able to close down uh, some potential competitors. In this context, the internet users and content publishers are not totally stupid. They, they saw what was happening. So increasingly, we were getting questions around this um, project saying, well, how can you guarantee the sustainability of our investment? Because uh, um, making a frozen site does not mean a lot of money. It can be easily done and quickly done, but maybe we'll attract a big audience. We'll count on this audience to do things with them. And, and plus the investments of uh, the other players in the e ecosystem, the uh, host uh, sites and so on. So how can you prove that the, the technology will remain on the same philosophy? As we are very ethically minded in this uh, project, we um, at one point found it impossible to um, to prove that we could uh, to vouch for this. Uh, it w how could we prove that uh, we will never be bought? And uh, what about our promise? So we thought we talked about it uh, among. Uh, uh, with uh, the shareholders of the company and, and legal experts. Uh, we tried to find solutions that would address this problem, and we found the solution by creating this OP3FT, uh, this uh, endowment fund, a legal structure that was set up in 2008 in France, which allows you to host this type of project. That is, you can um, hand over the uh, technology to this endowment fund with as its mission um, uh, described in the bylaws to continue to develop uh, this without any time limit as uh, an open standard and our company um, kept the commercial part in, of the project that is the management of the uh, registry the central progress registry of addresses so when you have the web standards browsers charges as well at the level of uh, made by OP3FT. And for domain names, they have register operators working under delegation in charge of managing names that are attributed, as well as a very important part, which is resolving addresses on the network. I spoke about how this works at the first uh, Forgans Technology Conference, I believe. So we created this endowment fund to guarantee for users a sustainable project and that they can no longer be captured by any economic player or by us because our company can no longer recover this technology that it has once and for all given to the endowment fund. Thank you. I'm sure you have all noted that we speak a lot about the Forgans project. We're considering it as an ongoing process, as something that is still being completed with dynamic periods galvanized by events. And above all, it's a project where everyone can collaborate, where everyone can find their role. And this is a powerful vision of OP3FT, Alexei. Could you give us your vision of the commitment of people in the Frogans project, regardless of their role, their background, or speciality? Well, let's talk a lot about content providers. The person who has uh, content and proposes it to internet users, but around them you have lots of players who are involved in publishing on sites. And for the project to be deployed globally, easily, we decided to host all of these players 
so that they are partners in this project so that they can freely decide whenever they wish to join the project to launch a project themselves or an initiative themselves within the project. Let me point us straight away that all of these players, the millions of developers, the so millions of uh, website publishers who can do that whenever they feel like, whenever they start to realize what they'll find interesting in the project. Now, in our map for entering the internet today, we see things very gradually allowing people to properly understand where they're heading, we already have the first users, the first players of the ecosystem who are involved around the register, the Forgans Central Register, uh, distributing and marketing Forgans addresses. We'll hear more about that tomorrow. There will be guests who will be showing us what they're doing today. So our philosophy it's not to force people to move. It's all about receiving them, helping them to understand, and by and by, receiving them in this project. And uh, keeping this idea in mind that they're entirely free with respect to OP3FT, which is not there, to supervise everything that's happening. It's just to make sure that people are working properly in line with the rules that were drawn up for using this technology. I don't know if I've answered your question properly. <laughs> Fine. Anyway, can I have the website up on screen? I'll be inviting you to go on this website, which has been online since today, project.forgans.org. Alexi, I'd like to conclude by congratulating the web designers for this wonderful website which is extremely colorful and dynamic. Oh, yes, there is some color down there, that's true. Uh, well, maybe you could tell us about this web design very briefly to conclude this presentation and to invite people to come and read what's written here instead of just looking at, the, at, at this as a look alike. Well, to get down to the nitty-gritty, we worked a lot with our teams. Even though there are more and more people, there's still a lot of work to be done. For the time being, we place our trust in our ecosystem of users. You must go and look at the essential information on these websites. But for the time being, we haven't devoted much time because we lack time to carry out the design. But by and by, as the project is anchored on the internet, we will have more time to review all of this. I believe that you're fully involved in this as well. So when you have a bit more time, you can explain to us how we can put in flags with uh, pictures. But one important thing on the top of this page, and I didn't point this out earlier, so there may be some people who close the door saying that it's easier to replace sites. It's an error. We don't plan to win replace websites, but we do plan to provide a solution to people who can't easily publish quickly. What can the websites be used for? Well, for making beautiful pages like this to begin with, that you can't do with a Forgans website. But above all, as we shall see later on, Forgans websites are not there to replace websites. Websites are big screens with pictures, video, full resolution, and Frogan's websites. Uh, you have seen them already, I believe. These are websites that are quite small on screen, on the computer screen. But it entirely occupies the page of a mobile terminal with a small screen. So we do not plan to replace websites at all, or mobile applications, because that may be the next question. So we, people will continue to make, to use mobile applications for some things, for advanced applications, or for things other than just publishing content. I just wanted to point that out, because that may sound a bit like uh, aggressive. It's not. The, the internet layers exist and work in parallel, harmoniously. When the instant messaging started, people didn't stop sending emails 
instant messaging and email. These are different uses, and we think that there can be no doubt that publishing Furogan's uh, sites is for different purposes. Thank you so much. And you have a brief summary at the end of this page of the key steps of the project. People often ask us, because one of the questions is that 14 years is a long time. So we confirm that it is a long time. And we also confirm that there are many steps that have been crossed with respect to globalization, compatibility with networks, mobile terminals, and also the creation of OP3FT, which was, I believe, a decisive step for the success of this project, and at the same time, quite complicated to roll out because the people here are all part of OP3FT. And before that, they were a part of STG Interactive, the initial company. And they realized that their work by nature was evolving, that the sustainability of their work had to be ensured, and traceability, of course, in terms of choice and decisions made. But I think we'll be telling you more about that a bit later on tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alexei. So the introduction of a new software layer, uh, for guns, it's all about giving new ground for easy, fast, and secure publication. These are the ambitions of the Frogans project. Thank you so much, Alexei. Stefan, let me call on you and give you the floor. What Alexei said, did you find that uh, inspiring? How do you feel about the Forgan's project and this vision of it? And are there any questions in the room? I will now give you the floor. Thank you, Jean Emmanuel. Let me go over here because I think I'm disturbing a little bit in the middle of the stage. You will, I'm sure you have understood that one of the themes tonight is interactivity. Interactivity with Jean Emmanuel, who is questioning the speakers, and interactivity as well with you. All those who can follow us, be it here physically or over the internet, please do not hesitate to ask your question. This is my role. My job is to try to build this interactivity with you. We're in a very relaxed environment you've seen, so don't hesitate. We often say at OP3FT that there are no bad questions, so do not hesitate to ask your questions and to make the most of the presence of one of the co-founders of the technology. Alexis is here to answer your questions. Maybe I could begin. The first question is always the hardest. Maybe I could begin if you wish. Otherwise, I will just come down in the room, raise your hands, and I'll walk around with my microphone to hand it over to you for you to ask your questions. But it is true that, to begin with, we're dazzled by the ambition of this project. But I have a very simple question for the co-founder. Do you doubt sometimes? Well, of course, sometimes you doubt over a period of 15 years. The advantage of having two founders at the same time is that in general they don't doubt at the same time. So there's a good relay. But to say things differently, yes, we have had very significant technical difficulties to overcome. For example, think of in the 2008-2009 when you started to be able to deploy our technology and we realized with a dismay that mobile term terminals are going much faster than we had imagined especially with the appearance of iPhones. And that largely called into question our project, our work, which is almost finalized. And we needed to start all over again from scratch. So there were times then, very important moments in history, when we really wondered if we would be able to catch up or if we were condemned in actual fact to be always there with a the problem ahead of us. It just so happens that this, with the tough work conducted by our teams, we were able to overcome that. And today, I can say that we still have problems. Tomorrow, you'll be seeing that we'll be presenting R&D, research and development around the uh, international addresses. And you'll see that the head of specifications will explain 
the work that we had to carry out to secure our addresses. And I must admit that since the first Fergan Technology Conference, I didn't believe that it would be so difficult to finalize this part. But it's once again, we are a very uh, we are fighting team. When we have difficulties, we find solutions. And with work, we're not geniuses, but we really work hard. But we f find solutions. So there are difficulties, there are doubts, but in the final analysis, this team ends up, always ends up winning the day. So we are trusty, trust, full of trust. Okay, I can see a first hand being raised in the auditorium. I have another obvious question that I won't raise as yet. We'll see. But I'm sure that's a question that everyone thinks of when you hear about this technology. Could you please introduce yourselves, your name? We're not too formal here. Hello, over in your pop. About what you said about mobile systems that was a rising technology, do you have a vision of what may emerge in the near future? We saw that Apple will be coming out with an iWatch, things like that. What are the technical constraints you anticipate in the coming years? And OP3FT, how can it anticipate in that? The emergence of mobile telephones, why is that a problem for us? Well, our development environment with which we built the software technology, the Fogans player, to be quite clear, was not at all, did not deal with that broadly. So we didn't have the right environment for working concretely, and we had to uh, re engineer a lot to set up an environment that could really be adapted to many different terminals. Today, and we've changed our programming language. We revamped our production chains that are still evolving, progressing. So we were in a very uncomfortable situation. Furthermore, we also depended on some standards for addressing the Unicode international characters. And of very few people are specialists very precisely on this technology. So all of these investments we made, you may say now we have new terms that will appear. Well, our development environment and the experts in our teams, I have trust in them. All of the equipment that appear, they use low-level technical foundations that are similar. You always have a uh, concept for programming and applications to take one detail. Languages are very similar when you are at a very low level programming. And that's where we work with our software. So of course, we must adjust. We will need to adjust. There will be complicated things that will have to be done. But this is a relatively comfortable situation in terms of our working environment and infrastructures. So I'm very much, I'm much more confident than when we discovered the multiplicity of terminals some years ago. The people in charge of that who see exactly what that means. So there you have it. As for the future, I can't tell the future. I'm surprised as you are about the creativity with physical terminals, screens appearing. I find it very interesting. But we are afraid of nothing in that respect. I think we have the ability to make the tools to be present on those environments. Thank you, Alexei. Another question. We have time for at least one more question to try to be on time tonight. Joe Emmanuel asked me to ask, put a question. He didn't want to do it himself. I will put that question if no one else wants to ask that question. But there's one obvious question for me. Quite simply, when will it come about? When's it for? Well, on the website for the project that you discovered earlier that was put online today in actual fact, we started setting some dates because we're seeing certain events converge around the introduction 
of this layer on the Internet. And while making Frogan's websites and publishing websites, that will be possible in, in the second quarter of 2015, in between the lots of events that will be taking place. You will have the uh, Frogan Central Register that will be opened up with reservation programs for brand owners and for owners. So we have many events that will take place to prepare for that opening. Thank you. So this is a real revelation to have a date from one of the co-founders. As I said before in the introduction, this is an exciting moment for Frogan Technology and this project. Thank you, Alex, for your sincerity and transparency. Thank you.